Hey guys, Tarek with Cyclone FPV, and I'm getting ready to get a quad uh, put together, or actually, just I'm just putting the receiver in for a customer. Uh, he's got the Arrow uh, 3, and so let me go ahead and do a picture-in-picture picture here, and I'll show you guys what we're working on, and we can get started. Okay, and my dogs are going outside inside, so you can see those doors opening quite a bit. All right, so first thing we're going to do is just let's open up this brand-new Arrow 3. Uh, let me make sure this is the success, yep. Okay. We're going to be putting it in RXSR, okay? So, all right, thank you. Okay, so here we are. Let's go ahead and take the top of this off. All right, so HDLRC has already provided us with a uh, the wiring, okay? And so I'm gonna go ahead and um, utilize the wiring that they've already soldered on. And so here's the RXSR that we're gonna be using. <clears throat> All right, somewhere in here, there it is. Okay, so uh, in this case, I guess what we'll do, actually I said I was gonna utilize it, but uh, they already have their own. So I'm probably just going to, let me do this. Uh, I will leave that cable and I will, uh, no, I'll utilize this cable here. So let me just do that. So on this cable here, uh, we've got on the, on the uh, RXSR, if you'll look on the diagram here, this will help some of you guys, okay, because here's the biggest problem people usually have with these. They get the S bus and they get the S port mixed up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to be using uh, wires one, two, and four. All right, which should be red, black, and green. Yellow is your S port wire. We're going to tuck that back and S bus in, we're going to tuck back as well. So the white wire and the yellow wire, we're going to pull back, okay? And I'm just going to basically uh, wind these up because I don't want to remove it for the customer if they may use it down the road, right? We don't want to, especially if they want to do updates or anything else, perform some updates on there and stuff. So we're going to wind these back, okay? And what I'm gonna to do to make it a little bit better is I'm gonna put one wire on the top and I'm gonna clip the ends off by the, actually they don't even need to be this long. Let me just make this clear here. Let's just do it like this there. So we're gonna cut that off and we're gonna fold one back here and one here. Keep them kind of separated a little bit and then we'll just put some heat shrink on there. So let me grab a little bit of heat shrink. Doesn't have to be a big amount, just a small amount, something like that. Just place that over the area, just like this. Uh, okay, I may go a little bit bigger on the heat shrink then. Feels something more like this, I guess. There we go. Gonna heat that up real quick. This way we secure these wires. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now, the rest of the wires are already in place here from uh, HDLRC. And so what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and just link into those. So I'm just gonna wind these up a little bit. By the way, the, the wire Free Sky uses is awesome wire, okay? So when you do cut it, save it, because the, the silicone on these is a really high temp silicone, and it, these hold up really well uh, when you're soldering and stuff, okay? So next thing is to figure out where we wanna place this, okay? Uh, we are kinda cramped for room here. Um, the RXSR is pretty small, and we could what they what they do is they have it set up to go into these little spots here. I don't really like using these, um, but you know if it's if it's if it's available to get this in here without a, without too much of a fight, I will. Sometimes I end up fighting these uh, these prints that they send, and I can't get it in properly. Uh, I can't get the wire in there properly. So like right now, so I'm gonna see. Let me just um, let me see what they've left as an opening on those because they sometimes these openings on these prints are terrible. So I'll probably just run the I'm gonna run the uh, I'm gonna run the antenna on the outside and just heat shrink it down. As far as where I want to put this, well, I've got to make it to where the customer can bind. 
And so my, my thought here is if I can squeeze this right in here, right, and get it to sit right here properly, and then bring the antennas around, right, I should be able to, should, should, is the key here. So I've also got to fit this harness on. So let me put the harness in now, just like that. There, okay, just couldn't feel it, like get in there. All right, so <clears throat> they've got the, um, they've got the uh, soldering already done. The problem now is, I guess, because I'm fighting for space here, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this to just, if I can link these wires together, but if not, I may find myself, uh, and that's gonna be a bummer though, but I may find myself having to desolder, but I don't really wanna do that. So I think what I'll do is, let me try it like this. So I'm gonna cut these here about that length, okay? And I'm going to, uh, and the reason I'm doing it this way is, if you guys are gonna do this at home, right? I, I'm gonna to try to advise you not to alter the soldering that comes from the factory if you don't have to, okay? Um, only because you don't want to end up messing up the board and then you, you mess up your warranty. All right, let me get this watch on. It's just nonstop. So if you can just splice into a wire like this, you know, make sure you tin it up properly. Uh, you know, you can, you can kind of avoid that headache, especially if you're not too confident in your soldering. Uh, you can use solder paste on doing something like this to make it easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this way. Now, if it's if it's me doing a quad from scratch, then no, of course I wouldn't do this, but there's really no harm in it. It's just a preference thing. All right, let me go ahead and clean the tip of the soldering iron off. There we go. Let's get some solder. Let's tin the wires and make sure when you tin them, please, that you put them over so that they're not hanging over a component so you don't drop solder on the board. And I'm just going to tin these up and I'm going to try to do it without putting on my magnifying glasses here. There's one, there's two, and there's three. All right, should be good for that. Now let's go to the receiver wires, which are right here. We're gonna to try to squeeze this receiver somewhere in here, maybe even like that, right? And just use some hot glue uh, after we uh, heat shrink it. So uh, the receiver wires don't need to be very long at all. So we're gonna cut this to about right here. Again, save these, they're excellent wires. <clears throat> let's go ahead and strip these down and tin them up. So we'll do a uh, one, two, and three. Let's dip these in here. Remember, if you guys don't have flux paste, you can find that on our website under tools and then soldering supplies or soldering tools. Uh, and uh, this is exactly what we have here. I, I only use what I sell. I don't use any other products unless they're on my website to be able to be sold. So that way you can, you can see that whatever I'm doing, you can do, and you can have the same equipment to do it with, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna put this up here though so I can solder this quickly. So let me just do that. Let me clean the tip of this off real quick. There we go. And let's knock this out. We'll do one here. One here. And let me see this red one. And then we'll do the red one here. Okay. All right, so now that it's tinned, the only thing left to do is to bind these wires together, right? So what we wanna do is, <laughs> one thing you don't wanna do is forget to put your solder or to put put your heat shrink on. I think it's probably the one dumb mistake that we all make is we've done an awesome soldering job and then we're like, God darn it, forgot to put the heat shrink on. We gotta desolder it again and then do it all over again. So just please make sure, and I'm just gonna grab some regular heat shrink here and just kind of put it down on the wires to begin with. And this way I can avoid forgetting to add it. And I think I probably, one out of every 10 times, I think I still forget to put it on there before I, I do the job, which is so irritating, but it is what it is. I got a mos mosquito here, hold on. Ah, all, right. all right, so now let's go ahead and solder this on. And I've got a little bit of, a little bit of excess wire here. I'm gonna trim this back, you know, like maybe four millimeters, three millimeters, something like that. I mean, somewhere around that area, three millimeters is fine too. So let me just do that here. And then I'm gonna lightly just get this together. And we're going to solder it. Uh oh, hold on one second. I'll be All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to get the phone. All right, so getting back to what we were doing here, I'm getting ready to solder. Uh, we're going to put the ground first. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, here's where I might need my magnifying goggles, but I'm not sure yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring these together. 
and just kind of heat that up and hopefully get them to bind there. Excellent. So there's one. And then I'm going to take the yellow, the green and the yellow and put those together. So let me do that one next. And let's do this. And that's two. And then we're going to do the power or the positive here. Let's do that. Sorry, it's just kind of fumbling around. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so all those are done. We can turn the solder off. Soldering machine off, solder iron off, sorry. And we now can go to uh, lining up our heat shrink to cover the wires as needed. So let's pull those. Some of them may have moved a little bit, but let's just pull those and place them where they need to go. And the cool part is, is once you line them, line them up all at the same time, once you start hitting that heat shrink, you should be able to uh, kind of shrink them all around the same time and get them roughly done. So there we go, there we go. Okay. I'm going to move the ground down. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to get the heat shrink, the, the, the heat gun, and we're going to get started. And there you have it. Clean connection. Everything's solid. And we're good to go. Okay. Once they're hot and uh, everything's shrunk, you just press them with your fingers. Kind of make sure that they all kind of shrink down to the tightest they can around those cables. All right. And then... Now I'm going to unplug the uh, VTX at this point because I want to power this on and make sure that we have everything that we need for this to work. So go ahead and do that real quick. And I don't want the VTX to interrupt with our video feed here. And that's why I'm doing that. So let's go ahead and get ready. So I'm going to put the... Um, I'm going to put the uh, uh, smoke stopper. Remember what this thing's called sometimes. There we go. I'm going to fire this up, and we're going to look at the lights here. And I still need to heat shrink this, but let's look and make sure. There we go. So we're ready to go. Blue light indicates it is in S-bus mode. Everything else is connected, so we're good. So I'm going to turn that off now. Disconnect. And then now it's time to just heat shrink. Let me go ahead and turn this blue on just in case I think I might need it. Uh, and then we're going to heat shrink this here, and we're still going to try to place... The receiver here, right there, so we get the heat shrink out. So I'm going to cut this back just a little bit because I need it to get around the plug and this is too long anyway. And then I need to get around the plug over here. So I'm going to cut back about four mil of these. That way this piece will fold back a little bit when I try to put this on. All right, just like that, see? Now we're going to heat shrink this part down. Make sure that stays solid. Go, lift it up. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to work on where we're going to place it. So my thought is if we can place it somewhere here. We are kind of limited in room, so let's make our best to get this to fit. Oh yeah, let me plug the VTX back in real quick. Put this away. These wires, put these away. And like I said, try to keep these wires if you can. These are free sky wires and they're very good. So let's go ahead and put these in a little baggie for now. Okay. Let's 
BTX approval the hard way for that. Okay, BTX is back in. So now our job is to mount this receiver. And again, I guess, sorry, my dogs are fighting back there. And again, my thought here is if we can just get this to place, but if we have any problems with it, we will be get very creative here in just a second. I'm gonna unplug this here so I can twist these up pretty good. that there should be okay there's no room to clear this here that's the problem so I was gonna try to see if we could but I don't think that, that plug we're gonna be able to and I can turn it this way right bring these wires down and turn it and let it hang off but the problem is I want the customer to be able to get to the binding button. However, at this point, um, let me see how much room I have to work with anyway. So if I was to place it like here, there would be enough room. Which means that equally so if I was to place it here, but I don't like having it that close to the VTX. That's the problem. It's a little, that VTX gets hot. So let me see what else I can do here. And it's just like playing Tetris. You just got to make sure you put it in a way to where it's safe. It makes sense. It doesn't take a, a risk of hurting the quality or the product, you know, degrading the signal. And at this point, let me see if I can go sideways then. Let's see if we do that. So if we come in sideways, which actually is not a bad idea because it does give us room to tuck all the wires away, like this, right? So if we do that, you can still get to the binding button and we can actually leave the cables uh, up here. The top will close over it. So let's see if we can do that. And then the only thing left is to just run the antennas which would just easy so let's just do that and this way we might actually end up with a pretty safe and pretty dependable setup so let me put this over here i'm not going to sit here and try to wiggle this antenna through these 3d prints that's just nonsense for me so let me see if i can just utilize a 3d print to give me some uh, good support for the antennas i think i'm going to put these cables though i think i'm going to tuck the wires down here somewhere try to leave them kind of out of the way let me see i could take them behind i guess hey what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> come here this is, oh no it's okay here you want that in here here come here, come here. Uh, you can have it here this is what my dog is she's walking oh he dropped it oh this is low main it's my other dog low main so she's eating um <laughs> here there you go <laughs> she's got those uh, anti-magnetic, anti-static bags, and she's going to town on them, so who am I to stop a dog that's having fun? I don't know why she's doing that, but hey, it is what it is. All right, so let's get this antenna down. I need this to come up just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so we've got our antenna down. All right, so I'm gonna heat this up real quickly. Let's go ahead and fix this permanently.
right back here. Like this. And then this way the customer can still get to it. And then I guess when he's done binding it, and he's gonna see this video, so he'll see what my instructions are. But basically you can just leave the wires laying out like that. That should pose no problem at all. So now let's go ahead and close this up. Okay, looks like we've got everything kind of done properly here. So we'll let that go. All right, there you go. So everything's done, camera's in, everything's reset, and the system is ready to go, okay? So now when it gets to the customer, all he has to do is bind it, and he can reach the actual bind button right here. So you can get to it from here, you don't have to take anything apart, and I would probably put a little drop of hot glue right there, just hold it in place. Other than that though, this system is finished, 100%, ready to go, and uh, hope you have a good time with this. And if any of you guys need to do this on yours, at least now you have the instructions on how to do it, hopefully that helps. And this is out the door. All right, guys. So that pretty much uh, sums it up for this one. Hope that helps you guys at all. If you need any help with anything else, please, as always, use our, uh, our website and contact me, and I'll be sure to help you as best I can. And then, as always, uh, please follow us on Facebook, like us, follow us, whatever it is, and then also subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. That kind of stuff helps us a lot. All right? Till then, peace. Spend time with your family, guys. Make the most of it. You never know how much time you have left. So please spend time with your family and fly later. Talk to you soon. Bye.